Hi, welcome to this Alchemist Chemistry A-level video looking at back titrations. Now, as the name suggests, a back titration involves working backwards through a calculation with the starting point being information about a titration taking place. So let's work through a worked example, but initially we're going to do a flow diagram approach just to sequence the events taking place. So we're told that 1.25 grams of limestone which is mainly calcium carbonate, was allowed to react with an excess of hydrochloric acid, that's 50 centimeters cubed of one molar hydrochloric acid. Once the mixture had stopped bubbling and reacting, the leftover hydrochloric acid was then diluted up to a volume of 250 centimeters cubed in a volumetric flask, and then 25 centimeters cubed samples of that acid was then titrated against 0.1 molar um, sodium hydroxide, and it took 30 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide to completely neutralize that small sample of leftover hydrochloric acid. And then we're later on asked to calculate the percentage of calcium carbonate present in the limestone. So we can't go straight to that. All we can work out from this information initially is the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide because we've got the concentration and volume of sodium hydroxide. So we'd calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide involved in one titration against 25 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid. Using a molar ratio from the Basel equation, we could then work out the moles of hydrochloric acid in that 25 centimeter cubed aliquot. Of course, we'd then need to scale up to the 250 centimeter cubed volumetric flask amount of moles. So assume we times by 10. But let's now say we now know how many moles of hydrochloric acid was left over. If we then take that away from the moles of hydrochloric acid at the start, which was in excess, which we know about here, well, then stands to reason that the number of moles of hydrochloric acid um, that is not included in what was left over is what reacted directly with the calcium carbonate. And then for another molar ratio, if we know the balanced equation for that reaction, we can therefore directly work out the moles of calcium carbonate actually reacting with the hydrochloric acid at the start. And through this backwards process, we now have enough information to tackle the question head on and find out the percentage of calcium carbonate in the limestone sample. So we had to work from the titration backwards through two stages to work out the moles of the reactant of interest, which in this case was the calcium carbonate. I'm now going to take you through how to work through that calculation step by step. Right, I've kept the question visible so we can see it at all times. It's color coded so we can keep a track of the various sums we're talking about as we work through the calculation. Now, as I said before, we have to start with the sodium hydroxide. It's the only substance we have enough information about, concentration and volume, which is not in excess. And so to work out the moles of sodium hydroxide, that would be moles equals concentration times volume. 0.1 is the concentration, 30 or 1,000 converting the volume from centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed, telling us we have three times 10 to the minus three moles of our sodium hydroxide reacting with the leftover hydrochloric acid. Then we need to consider what reaction is actually taking place here. We have hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium dioxide in a one-to-one -one ratio to form sodium chloride, table salt, and water. So if we know it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we therefore know how many moles of hydrochloric acid is present in those 25 centimeter cubed titration samples. Um, it must be also three times 10 to the minus three moles of hydrochloric acid in our titration. Aha, but don't forget, that 25 centimeter cubed sample was taken from the larger 250 centimeter cubed volumetric flask amount. So we have to multiply that number of moles by 10 to find out how many moles of hydrochloric acid were in that volumetric flask, that 250 centimeter cubed volume. And that would be three times 10 to the minus two moles of hydrochloric acid. And that's all the hydrochloric acid left over after the reaction between the excess hydrochloric acid and the calcium carbonate accounted for. Now we can work out how much hydrochloric acid was in the excess at the start. So that would be moles equals concentration times volume, one times 50 over a thousand converting centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. Then we have five times 10 to the minus two moles of hydrochloric acid excess at the start of the reaction. So therefore we can now take away from the moles of hydrochloric acid at the start, the moles of hydrochloric acid we now know we have left, and that will leave us with the exact amount of moles of hydrochloric acid that was directly reacting with the calcium carbonate in that first reaction. In other words, if we take five times 10 to the minus two, 
and take away 3 times 10 to the minus 2, what was left over after the reaction had taken place, it tells us that only 2 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of hydrochloric acid were directly reacting with the calcium carbonate in this reaction here. And so finally, we've gathered enough information from our calculations to start looking at the calcium carbonate directly. What I've written down here is the reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. You can see that it's a two to one ratio forming calcium chloride salt, carbon dioxide and water. So for every two moles of hydrochloric acid, it should react with one mole of calcium carbonate. And if we now know that we had in our first reaction, two times 10 to the minus two moles of hydrochloric acid directly reacting with the calcium carbonate, Following that two to one ratio, that would mean that only one times 10 to the minus two moles of calcium carbonate was actually reacting from the limestone. So we now know how many moles of calcium carbonate were in the limestone. And at this point, we can then convert that into a mass, and that would be like so. Mass is equal to moles times the relative formula mass of the substance involved, in this case, calcium carbonate. So one times 10 to the minus two, the moles of calcium carbonate in the limestone times by 100.1, 40 for calcium, uh, 12 for carbon, and 16 times 3 for the three oxygen atoms in the formula of calcium carbonate, gives us a mass of calcium carbonate in the limestone of 1.001 grams. And we can pretty much almost calculate that percentage of calcium carbonate with one more step to go. That final step is shown here. To work out a percentage of calcium carbonate in the limestone, we take the mass of calcium carbonate divided by the total mass of limestone, 1.25 grams, times by 100 to convert to percentage, 80.08%. In other words, about 80% of the mass of the limestone is comprised of the active ingredient reacting with the acid, which is the base calcium carbonate. So there you have it. We've just completed an advanced A-level calculation known as a back titration. And the key idea behind this is to start with the titration, work out the moles of one reactant, then the other, and then slowly work our way back to the substance of interest. I really hope you found that useful and insightful and will help you with your advanced A-level calculations in the future. As always, um, it's a pleasure talking to you and if you'd like to support the channel, you could uh, give this video a like, you could subscribe, you could even ring the bell, you can know about this content and I do try and put videos on a weekly basis and your support is always hugely appreciated. You can even share this video or other videos on the channel with friends studying chemistry to help them along as well. All it stands for me to say is thank you very much. Take care. Bye now.